Hey everybody, this is Brain Muffin back with a look at things in pop culture and unfortunately we have sad news. I heard this, I had to confirm it several places. This is the Hollywood Reporter, IGN is also reporting it. But it seems Stanley has finally passed on. Um, we've had a lot of stuff the last several years with his family and you know, different things going on and, and people taking advantage of him and it was really crazy. But Stanley, Marvel Comics, real life superhero, dies at 95. Uh, so he was quite up there in age. The feisty writer, editor, and publisher was responsible for such iconic characters as Spider-Man, the X-Men, Thor, Iron Man, Black Panther, and the Fantastic Four, enough said. And I, I know some of these he co-created um, and, and things, and his wife died, what, a year or so ago. Stan Lee, the, red, the legendary writer, editor, and publisher of Marvel Comics, who's fantabulous but flawed creations made him a real life superhero to comic book lovers everywhere has died and he was 95. Lee who began his uh, began in the business in 1939 created and co-created by or co-created Black Panther, Spider-Man and the X so we only read all these uh, Incredible Hulk, Daredevil, so many Ant-Man, you know, several iconic characters here and many of these have now come to be known by an entirely new generation through the movies. Among countless other characters, died early Monday morning at uh, Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. So if he was a minute that, he was probably already you know close. That's almost like a hospice thing at that point. He's his final few years were tumultuous. That's yeah, but uh, bluntly, uh, well, lightly rather. Uh, after Joe and his wife of 69 years, wow, died in 2017. He sued executives at Powell Entertainment, a company he founded in 2001 to develop TV, film, TV, and video game properties. For $1 billion alleging, alleging fraud, then apparently dropped the suit weeks later. <clears throat> he also sued his ex-business manager and filed restraining orders against a man who had been uh, handling his affairs. So he's estimated $70 million. And in June of this year, it was revealed that Los Angeles police were having investigating reports of elderly abuse against him, yes. Uh, on his own and through his work with, with frequent uh, artist, writer, collaborators, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, who died in July, and others. Lee uh, catapulted Marvel from a tiny venture into the world's number one publisher of comic books and later a multimedia giant. Yeah. And so, and I think, I don't know if Jack's still alive or not, with Steve Ditko gone and Stan Lee, we've, we've really seen some generational shift here. In 2009, the Walt Disney Company bought Marvel for $4 billion and most of the top grossing superheroes, okay, films of all time um, have featured Marvel characters, that's for sure. He used to think that it was uh, not very important. He told the Chicago Tribune in, in April 2014, people were building bridges and engaging in medical research and all I was uh, doing. Uh, and here I was doing stories about fictional people who do extraordinary, crazy things and wear costumes. But I suppose I have come to realize the entertainment is not essentially uh, easily dismissed. That's for sure. And especially, <clears throat> or in particular, when the, his, um, these things have become icons, you know. Least fame and influence uh, as a face and figure in Marvel, even in his uh, non-agrarian, agir uh, anyway, <clears throat> as he got older. Beginning in the 1960s, the irre uh, irrepressible and feisty Lee punched up his Marvel superheroes with personality, not just power. Um, until then, comic headlines like DC Comics were square and, and well-adjusted. Um, yeah, that's true. He, he kind of showed the vulnerability. And we saw this in the second Spider-Man movie with... Uh, um, um, Raimi, where Peter wasn't sure he wanted to be Spider-Man, and he lost his powers uh, for the most part for a while until uh, he was forced to make a, a, cho a hard choice, right? When um, Doc Ock stole his girlfriend and was going to be threatening his family, it's like, I have to stand up. The story has taught me that even superheroes like Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk have ego deficiencies and girl problems and do not live in their macho fantasies 24 hours a day. Gene Simmons of Kiss said in a 1979 interview, so this is really going back. So this is really showing Stan's influence in writing uh, and, and, and the like. Though uh, the honesty of guys like Spider-Man learned about the shades of gray in human nature. Kiss made it to the Marvel pages, and Lee and Simmons Lee had Simmons bleed into a vat of ink so the publisher could say the issues were printed on with his blood. You know, I've heard that, and I don't know if it's true or not. I wonder if it's a, a, an urban legend that, you know, they just won't deny uh, the Manhattan-born uh, Lee wrote, um, art-directed, and edited most of Marvel's series and newspaper strips. He also penned a monthly comic uh, column, Stay in Soapbox, signed off with his, uh, his signature phrase, Excelsior. His way of doing things at Marvel was to brainstorm a, a story with an artist, then write a synopsis. After the artist drew the story panels, fill, uh, 
Lee filled in the word balloons and captions. This process became known as the Marvel Method. Lee collaborated with artist uh, writer Kirby on the Fantastic Four, Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, Silver Server, and X-Men. Wow, lots of uh, big properties there. With artist writer Ditko, he created Spider-Man and the Surgeon Doctor Strange. And with artist Bill Everett, he came up with the blind superhero Daredevil. And say so Daredevil's quite scarred. And that's that's part of what makes these these superheroes a bit more relatable. They're not perfect. Such collaborations sometimes led to credit disputes. Lee and Dit- Ditko reportedly engaged in bitter fights and both received writing credit on the Spider-Man movies and TV shows. I don't think anyone... I don't want anyone to think I treated Kirby or Ditko unfairly, he told Playboy in magazine in, in April 2014. I think we had a wonderful relationship. Their talent was incredible, but the things they wanted weren't in my power to give them. Like any Marvel employee, Lee had no rights to the characters he created and received no royalties. In the 1970s, Lee, um, Lee importantly helped push the boundaries of the censorship in comics, dubbing the serious and topical subject matter in a medium that had become mindless, kid-friendly entertainment. Um, 19, oh, so now we're going back in time again. This, this article jumps all around. In 1954, the publication of psychologist Frederick Heinrich's book, Seduction of the Innocent, had spurred calls for the government to regulate violence, sex, drug use. Yeah, it's usually, in a, you know, it's, um, yeah, juvenile delinquency. Um, so that's what, you know, the comics code. So there we go. Uh, scripted but, but not banal scenarios with characters like Nelly the nurse and Tessie the typist but in 1971 he inserted an anti-drug storyline into the amazing Spider-Man that's good anti-drug in which Peter Parker's best friend Harry Osborn pop pills and I think that DC had something like that with the Green Arrow and uh, and the Red Arrow this this those issues which did not carry the CC seal of approval on the covers became extremely popular and later the organization relaxed some of its guidelines Born Stanley Martin Lieber on December 28, 1922. Wow, that's quite up there. So he's 10 years, almost to the day. Well, he's a couple weeks past because my, I think my grandfather was born December 4th, I think, but earlier in December in 1912. So uh, that's interesting. He grew up uh, poor in Washington Heights, and his father, a Romanian immigrant, was a dress cutter, a lover of adventure books and Errol Flynn movies. He graduated from De- uh, Clinton High School, joined the W. PA Federal Theater Group, where he appeared in a few stage shows and wrote obituaries. See, it was a job as a gopher for $8 a week. That's qu- probably quite a bit of money in 1939. Uh, he was named intern and editor. I'm, I don't want to read this entire article. This is just to kind of give a background. Because, I mean, I know Stanley. I don't know his, his full story. You know, I didn't. I was sort of into comics back in the 70s, but mostly DC stuff. <clears throat> Following DC Comic led with Justice League, Lee and Kirby in 1961 launched their own superhero team, the Fantastic Four, for the newly renamed Marvel Comics, and Hulk, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Marvel, and X-Men soon followed. Yeah, I didn't realize how old X-Men were when those movies, the TV show came out in the in the 80s or 90s, and then the movies. Um, 1972 was named publisher and relinquished the Marvel editor reigns uh, to spend all of his life promoting the company. Uh, which is probably why he shows up in these movies and other people don't. Long before Marvel characters made it to movies, they appeared on television in an animated Spider-Man show with a memorial theme song composed by Oscar winner uh, Paul Francis Webster. Um, uh, ran on the MC from 1967. Bill Bix- I remember Bill Bixby playing uh, Dr. B- uh, David Banner during the 70s. And I also remember there was a... Uh, some kind of like, I guess, made for TV movies of Spider Man, uh, which were fantastic back in the day. I've, I've recently watched them again. And when that guy, you know, he, the camera goes over the edge and, go, and it goes straight down. Now, obviously, he's on a wire of some sort. But that was just really fantastic uh, for the time, you know. And they don't mention it here, oddly, uh, unless I missed it. Nope. I didn't. Lee launched the internet and so he has Stripperilla, a risque animated TV, Spike TV series that he wrote. Um, yeah. And I remember, I remember that. I never really cared for it. I didn't watch it. Yeah, Lou Ferrigno was the was the Hulk, and and uh, Bixby was David Banner. That was pretty interesting. Uh, Lee launched the internet-based Stanley Media in 1998, and the, the superhero creation production. And okay, so anyway, I don't really want to read all of the things. Um, and cha- as I stop on, uh, on a Times Square street to read news about the web slinger will soon receive the key to the city. You know, he says, "I guess one person can make a difference." Enough said. Um, so yeah, I, you know, this is sad news. I mean, obviously he's 95 and he's been going through some crap the last several years, uh, as this article mentions. And, you know, we don't, I don't know for certain that the elderly abuse was, I don't know if that was ever settled, if it really was happening, but there were people trying to, you know, 
take advantage of him and his age. Uh, we did a, an episode on the fan cast, in fact, uh, where, um, where we said, you know, Leafs stand alone. Uh, and it, you know, it's sad that he's gone. Uh, it's, we'll have, you know, obviously he'll live on through his creations. Uh, so uh, will the other writers and, and, you know, like Steve Ditko and others. And he left a, an incredible legacy for um, younger generations to follow. Unfortunately, Marvel's in the process, Marvel Comics in particular, is in the process of destroying all that stuff. Uh, but I think the, the public has risen up, and at some point they're going to have to just say, hey, you know, we need to get back to these stories. Because the, these heroes were, they, they were, yes, they were archetypes and things, but they, but they weren't perfect. And that's what made them different and made them more relatable. Um, you know, Batman, uh, in some ways, seemed to be this, this guy had everything together. And then we realized, you know, when you really think about how he became a superhero, that even in the DC universe, that's that's pretty grim. And, um, you know, many of these these uh, people, you know, with like X-Men, for instance, with the government trying to put down the mutants and some people rising up against mutants, some people want to become mutants. Uh, it's a very interesting dichotomy and very real to life. Um, you know, you don't have to go much further than the people who uh, were getting the government to do the censorship with the comic. Um, it was a CCA, right? And... Uh, you know, the comic code authority. And uh, th so you, it's not far stretched to think that if, if people are going to be that uh, annoyed by the written word, uh, that if, if we really did have mutants that rose up all of a sudden uh, with this kind of, a, or some people with these abilities, that we'd have, a, you know, some camp that would want them registered and, and, and feel their danger to society. And then there'd be others who'd want to study them. We see this in other other um, genres as well. You know, the, the scientist who just wants to kill something and dissect it. Uh, and we've seen that. And, um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, growing up, uh, Spider-Man was my favorite Marvel character. I'm sure I knew, a, I know I knew a Thor um, but Spider-Man was the one that had, and it was the, the character, right? It was, uh, and he had the Incredible Hulk. So we had the TV shows and we had the TV movies and we had this, and, and things. And, um, you know, the Sam Raimi movies with Spider-Man, I think, were, were some of the best uh, Marvel until we get into the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, you know, Thor, the first Thor was, was pretty good. The first Iron Man's pretty good. Um, I mean, some of them have been mediocre. Um, and then we had, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy, who I've never even heard of until those movies came out. So, you know, Stan, it's sad to see you go. Uh, but, you know, you've lived a full life. Uh, I think many of us can just hope to live uh, a, a life as, as full and meaningful and inf influential in the lives of so many people. Um, but uh, it was great to see you in the cameos. I'm really sorry that some of the crap that you went through the last several years uh, but you will be that that will be forgotten. And what will be remembered is uh, the great work that you did, the, your great collaborations, the stories and the heroes that you created and will live on uh, and they will rise again. They will come back to their glory once the, the current reign of stupidity is over at Marvel. And uh, we'll see some uh, reemergence of some incredible stories and people who will draw inspiration uh, from things that you did. So thank you, sir. Uh, we we uh, rest in peace. And we'll miss you, but we'll remember you, and uh, we will uh, do our best as fans to uphold the the timelessness of the things that you've created. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you. Goodbye.